Sutra, Mandu Sri. While dwelling here, I see and hear such things as these, reaching to a thousand million things, such a multitude of them, which I shall now explain in belief. In brief, commentary, Mandu Sri. While dwelling here, I see and hear such things as these, like what? Like the things described above. Reaching to a thousand million things, such a multitude of them, which I shall now explain in brief. All the many things I've seen, I now describe in general. I ask the Bodhisattva Manjushri to explain them to me in detail, but first I shall talk about them in general. Sutra. I see in other lands bodhisattvas like Gange Sens, through various causes and conditions seeking the Buddha way. Commentary I see in other lands. Maitreya Bodhisattva says, I can see in other worlds bodhisattvas like Gange Sens, as numberless as the grains of sand in the Gange River, through various causes and conditions using all manner of causes and conditions seeking the Buddha way. In seeking the Buddha way, we must foster merit and virtue. Don't think you can obtain the Buddha way cheaply. See Bodhisattvas in number as many as the grains of sand in the Gangs River use all kinds of causes and conditions. What does that mean, all kinds of causes and conditions? It means to foster all kinds of merit and virtue, to cultivate all kinds of blessings and wisdom, and to study all the various Buddha dramas. It's not just one kind of cause and condition which is used to seek in seeking for the Buddha way. Sutra, perhaps they practice giving with gifts of silver, gold, and coral. Of true pounds and of money, mother of pearl, carnelian, of vira, and of other gems, of servants and of carriages, jeweled hand drawn cards, and palanquins. These they offer up with joy in dedication to the Buddha way, vowing to obtain the vehicle foremost in the triple realm, the one which all the Buddhas praise. There are Bodhisattvas who give a jeweled culture and fall with the rays and flowered canopies, richly ornamented carriages. Again, are Bodhisattvas seen who give their flesh, hand, and feet, who even give their wives and children, seeking for the utmost way. Again, are Bodhisattvas seen whose hands, eyes, and bodies whole are offered up most joyfully seeking the Buddha's wisdom. Commentary Perhaps they practice giving. The first of the six penetrations. What do they give? With gifts of silver, gold, and coral of true pearls and of money. The money pearl is also called the as you will pearl. Mother of Pearl Carnelian, Mother of Pearl is a precious substance of white in color. It appears to have tracks in it, but when you touch it, it is smooth. Carnelian is a red stone that looks as if that looks as if it has blood in it. A vara and of other gems. Vara refers to diamond. Of servants and of carriages. Perhaps they give their slaves or servants or their jeweled hand drawn cards and palanquins. Cards refer to hand drawn cards, such as the Imperial Chariot, which the ancient emperors used to write in. Palanquins are um, sedan chairs which are carried on the shoulders. These they offer up with joy. They give with joy and delight. They aren't like us. We give five, ten, or twenty dollars and think it's a big thing. The Bodhisattvas gave away the seven jewels, such priceless things, and they did so happily. 
in dedication to the Buddha way. They dedicated their gifts to attaining the Buddha way. Why did they wish to offer up such valuable things? I give away these expensive things, those things which are the hardest for me to give. I give them happily in exchange, in exchange for the realization of Buddhahood. In dedication to seeking the Buddha ways, the road to Buddhahood, vowing to obtain the vehicle. I wish to attain the Buddha vehicle because it is foremost in the triple realm. In the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm, the one which all the Buddhas praise after realizing Buddhahood, all the Buddhas of the ten directions praise it in exaltation. Maitreya Bodhisattva addresses Majusri Bodhisattva, saying, Within the white hair mark emitted by the Buddha, the world honored one, I see that there are Bodhisattvas who give a jeweled coat and four. They have an exquisitely beautiful karyachis pawned by four horses. The karyachis are adorned with gems, with rails and flowered canopies. In the land of ultimate bliss, there are seven tiles of railings too. The karyach tops are made of flowers, richly ornamented karyachis adorned with beautiful things. Again, our bodhisattvas are seen who give their flesh, hand, and feet, who even give their wives and children. Not only do these Bodhisattvas give valuable objects, but they can even give their bodies, their own flesh, their hands or feet, or their wives and children to others. Would you say that such giving was practicing that which is hard to practice? We give a little money or a small gift and feel extremely self-satisfied, even arrogant, and think that we have earned a great deal of merit. And yet, here we see Bodhisattvas who can, if someone else needs them, give away their bodies, their flesh, and blood, their hands and feet. But you say, what use is there in giving away my body? You give someone, if you give someone a body, they can't eat it. Why give it? When Bodhisattvas practice the Bodhisattva way, they may encounter someone who has a particular illness and needs perhaps a heart transplant, such as those present, those present-day doctors perform, or perhaps they need a liver, spleen, lungs, or kidneys. The doctors remove the sick organ and replace it with a healthy one. The Bodhisattva, seeing such living beings, will supply the needed organs. The Bodhisattva will sacrifice his very life for another living being. Perhaps there is a living being who has injured his hand. Seeing this, the Bodhisattva will give his own hand to him. The same goes for the feet. Maybe someone was hurt in an auto accident, his bones smashed and his legs crippled. Seeing this, the Bodhisattva will give his own feet to him. This is done in order to teach and transform living beings. The Bodhisattvas who will even give their wives and children. They are not talking about Bodhisattvas who have already attained spiritual penetrations. They are simply those who have brought forth the Bodhisattva resolve. They simply have hearts full of giving. What do they give? They give what that which is most difficult for people to give their spouses. To say nothing of giving up one's wife or husband, most people find it extremely painful even to be separated from them for a short period of time. They find this extremely painful. However, these bodhisattvas, seeing that others need wives, will give their own wives away. There are many causes and conditions surrounding such giving. In my book, Record of the Water and Mirror Turning Back Heaven, I wrote about the abode of the monastery where I cultivated the venerable high elder Master Chang Ren. When he was cultivating the way, he gave away his wife. How did that happen? He had a wife, but when his father and mother died, 
He resolved to observe the practice of filial piety by sitting beside their graves for a period of three years. Why he said his wife was at home observing widowhood and she didn't like it one bit. She was a living widow. Her husband hadn't died but had gone off to observe filial piety. He did not return home. The living widow finally couldn't stand it and she went to the graveside and insisted, insisted that her husband return home with her. She went once, twice, three, four, and even five times, but he wouldn't return home. His heart was sincere. He cultivated the way with a sincere heart. Now those who have a sincere heart are bound to and culture demons. It is said, when the way grows a foot, the demon grows taller by ten. When the way grows ten feet, the demon sits right on your head. Because he was sincere and refused to return home, his wife thought of, a, of an ingenious plan. So, you won't return home? I just find someone other, some other man to spend my days with, she threatened. Take up with some other man if you like, he said. I'm through with household affairs. I have renounced everything. I have put everything down. I pay, pay no attention to such matters whatsoever. If he had been truly been intent on cultivating the way when his wife threatened to fight another man, how could he have endured it? But he said, all right, fine, if you find a man you like, someone you think you love, then go with him. Go with him, she said, okay, I'm going to go looking. When she went back and found herself a man, then she brought him with her to the graveside and spoke to her husband, saying, If you do not return home with me now, I'm going to marry this man. What do you think? Someone without journey, somebody power and a true mind of the way would have gone home, don't you think? But he didn't go. I'm going with him, she said, and off she went. He gave his wife away and didn't ask her for so much as a cent in return. This is truly an example of bodhisattvas giving their wives away, seeking for the utmost way. Why do they do this? Because they seek the utmost way. Bodhisattvas who seek the utmost way must be able to renounce that which is difficult to renounce. The harder it is for you to give it up, the more meaningful your act of renunciation becomes. The more meaningful your act of renunciation becomes, it then truly counts as seeing through it, breaking it open, giving it up, and winning your freedom. You can't say, I'm going to hold on to these things, those things that I can't apart, I can't part with. Even if I could become a Buddha by giving them up, I still won't let go of the things I love or the people I love. If you think like this, it's because you don't place importance on the Buddha way. If you saw the Buddha way as truly important, you would be able to put down absolutely everything. If the Buddha drama was of primary importance to you, you wouldn't become influenced by improper external circumstances. Again, our bodhisattvas are seen whose heads, eyes, and bodies hold. These are other bodhisattvas who give their heads, eyes, and bodies. The bodhisattvas mentioned above gave outer wealth and inner wealth. The outer wealth, the outer wealth refers to wives and children. The inner wealth is their bodily flesh, their hands and feet. But they do not give their entire bodies, they only gave their flesh or their hands or feet. Now these bodhisattvas give their very heads and eyes, their entire bodies are offered up most joyfully. If any living being at all is in need of a head, they will give up their heads. If they need eyes, they will give up their eyes. In fact, they give their whole bodies or any part of them. Someone thinks that's the idiotic 
How can you give your own body to others? You think the Bodhisattvas are stupid, but they think that you are stupid. Why? In being able to give, seeking the utmost way, they are able to end birth and death. In not giving, you may feel that you're intelligent, but you'll never be able to end birth and death. If you wish to end birth and death, you must imitate the great fearless spirit of these bodhisattvas who give up their bodies, hearts, and lives to others, to the world. They give cheerfully. They don't give angrily. They don't say, so you're giving? Let's have a little contest. If you give $10,000, I give $10,000. I give $10,000. If you give ten thousand, I give thirty thousand. They are not competitive in their giving. On the contrary, they give happily and cheerfully. Why do they give? They are seeking the Buddha's wisdom. Sutra Manjushri, I see royal monarchs who visiting those Buddha's courts ask about the utmost way and then forsake their. Pleasant lands, palaces, ministers, concubines, and cutting off their birds, beards, and hair, clothe themselves in drama robes. Commentary Manjushri, wonderful virtual bodhisattva, I see royal monarchs. I also see kings, not just one king, but many of them. Visiting those Buddha's courts, what are they doing? They are going off to visit the Buddhas. To ask about the utmost way, they ask about the Supreme Buddha way. After they ask about it, the Buddha instructs them in the doctrines of suffering, emptiness, impermanence, and non-self. He says everything in this world is bound up in suffering. Wealth and honor are like a dream before dawn. Power and fame are like a floating cloud. The bones and flesh of the present also are unreal. Devotion turns to hatred. Wealth and honor are as insubstantial as a dream just before the sun, the sun comes up. Power and fame are like a floating clouds in space. They do not last. The bones and flesh of the present moment The relationships of father and son, husband and wife, elder and younger brothers are also unreal. You may love someone and be very close to them, but in the future, as time goes by, love will turn into contempt and hatred. When the kings hear this instruction from the Buddhas, they immediately, without further thought, forsake their pleasant lands, their happy pleasure grounds. They give them away, palaces, ministers, concubines, their palaces made of jewels, their halls and pavilions made of aloes wood and sandal wood, their ministers and their concubines. Why do they give them away? And cutting off their beards and hair, they become novices and they clothe themselves in drama robes. They put on the clothing worn by those who have left home. The Shaya or five piece sash worn by novice monk. The kings leave the home life seeking the drama of the precepts, and so deception deals with morality. So try seeing our bodhisattvas who becoming pictures draw alone within the wise in created reciting sutra texts with joy. Commentary. Sin, Abuddha's advisor who lived the home life to become big shoes. Becoming big shoes dwell alone. This section deals with the perfection of patience. Perhaps the Buddhist advisor sin who dwell deep in the forest or in mountain caves, evil people may come upon them. When such people strike or rebuke them, they must patiently endure it. When evil beasts bite them, They also must be patient and not become frightened or alarmed. So these four lines discuss patience. They like to read and recite sutras. Sutra, again, a bodhisattva seen striving with heroic vigor 
answering the mountains deep and ponder on the Buddha way. Commentary Again, a Bodhisattva scene striving with theoric vigor. How are they vigorous? They go without eating to study the Buddha drama. They go without sleeping to study the Buddha drama. They aren't like some people who go without eating but make up for it by sleeping more, saying, I haven't eaten so I can't cultivate it. I sleep a little more instead. When others are not sleeping, they are asleep. That is not heroic vigor. Those with heroic vigor will go without eating because they forget about food altogether. They don't deliberately refrain from eating in order to put on that they are cultivating. They just forget about eating and sleeping. They forget about everything. What do they think of? They think only to cultivate and to study the Buddha drama.